Hi. Hey, Geek. What up, brother? Um, uh, I'm here in uh, the Big Apple, New York City at the moment. I'm sitting in my friend's apartment in, uh, uh, in Brooklyn in New York. Uh, very good friend of mine um, that uh, he when I first started um, doing the camp that I work at, which is up in up in upstate, um, Lucas was a uh, was another guitar tutor at the camp and uh and we've been friends ever since so that's kind of cool um it's very hot in here uh but i turned off the air conditioning because i currently don't have an amp so i'm going to be playing acoustically on this uh lucas's nice little fender here um i wanted to talk about um donnelly um which is a great study the head of of donnelly that is uh, is a great study in how to play bebop um the whole head is just filled filled to the brim with fantastic little uh, ideas and licks and um, and bits and stuff that I've kind of talked about already in this quote unquote series. Um, and I'm going to go through it, show you how to play it, talk about why it works and uh, and kind of go from there. Um, fun little side note, I'm going to Mythicist Milwaukee, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I was contacted by Vadim of um, creationist camp fame <laughs> and uh he said that they were looking for for some people to come along and join on this intersectionality panel so uh i'm going to be joining a bunch of dudes to talk about intersectionality <laughs> so that sounds fun anyway um so donnelly uh donnelly was written by charlie parker uh, one of the um <clears throat> one of the uh creators basically of, of bebop music back in the 30s and 40s um, Charlie Parker, also known as Bird, um, Yard Bird. He, uh, yeah, uh, him along with with a bunch of other sort of um, contemporaries like um, Dizzy Gillespie and, and Bud Powell and things like that, basically created bebop out of the swing kind of era of uh, they were the punk rockers of the 1930s. You had this uh, this kind of rinky tinky as they saw it um swing music of the jazz halls up of like harlem and and times square and things like this of these uh these these fancy pantsy dudes all you know dressing up all fancy and and playing playing the latest cool swing music um of the time and uh then you had these guys like charlie parker who looked at that music and scoffed and said screw you guys i ain't gonna play i ain't gonna conform to your to your nonsense to your nonsense swing music i'm gonna play whatever the crap i want so they kind of they basically invented a new style of music um out of swing music um which at the time was very confined to to you know certain rules and things like that and uh, like i say parker and, and others came along and started playing lots of uh big extensions on their lines fast lines you know playing really fast was kind of a thing you know these guys would spend hours and hours um every night in these uh in these kind of shredding competitions they would uh, they would go to you know to jam sessions at you know uh, early out to the early hours of the morning of um, you know playing playing these kind of these swing tunes but at really fast tempos um, and and sort of increased you know changes and things like this to uh, and so you know weeding out the the uh, the what do you call it the wheat from the chaff uh, so these guys yeah it was uh, so it was an interesting time and so the, in that kind of um, you know, intense, um, you know, kind of situation. That's kind of where bebop was sort of forged. Um, and a lot of the, a lot of the tunes from the time, the, the, the heads like, um, like Don Lee and Ornithology and, um, and uh, Blues for Alice and um, Anthropology and these are all Charlie Parker tunes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, we're all based on standards, previous standards that they'd just taken the chord changes for and then rewritten like a head over top of them. So, so, um, so Donnelly is Indiana, as far as I know, as a, as a, as a standard tune from, from a, from a musical, like I said, in a previous episode, you know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these standard tunes were taken from musicals and Broadway things at the time and sort of repurposed by these, by these jazz dudes. And so, yes, yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Indiana. 
is what is what Donnelly is. Um, ornithology is how high the moon. Um, what else did I say? Well, blues for Alice is kind of a different a different beast, but um, anthropology is a, is a rhythm changes, which is I've got rhythm, do 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 do, which is a um, Gershwin thing. Um, so you know, so if you if you find these uh, any of these kind of heads, uh, a good a good thing to kind of do is find out where they've come from. What they call this is called a contrafact, right? Um, where you've taken taken one set of harmonic changes and played a different head over top of it, and um, figuring out finding what the original tune was and learning that tune as well um and then doing kind of what i'm going to do now which is look at the head that has been created by parker or whoever was was playing at the time and see what was going on with that and how um you know how they kind of constructed the head um because it's basically just a, a, a kind of a, a microcosm of 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 a solo, I suppose. Like it, it, it's kind of the heads are generally kind of like solo esque. They would be like what the lines these guys would play. But they would have kind of formed into these things. Anyway, enough rambling. Um, the head for Donnelly, uh, kind of notoriously difficult, uh, especially at <coughs> at um, greater tempos. Listen to Charlie Parker playing it. Listen to Jaco Pistorius playing it. It's fantastic. Listen to Claire. What the hell was his name? He was a pianist. Um, shit, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he does a he does a version of it in three, four, where he plays a three, four time with his left hand and then plays the head in four, four time with his right hand. So it's like, it's really messy with your head, but it's fantastic. Um, that's a really uh, cool one as well. So there's a lot of good versions of Donnelly. Anyway, again, enough rambling. Let me, let me show you, I'll show you the first little bit of it. And then we'll talk about how that kind of works with the changes. So the first chord changes are a flat major seven. Um, F7, which is the six, and then B flat dominant seven, um, which is the two, but as a dominant chord, which again is kind of a common thing um, to sort of do. It happens in um, Take the A Train. That's the the two as a as a dominant seven, and then two five one. That that's the the whole kind of um, secondary dominant thing that again I've talked about previously, and I will talk about a lot in my video about Bohemian Rhapsody um, <laughs> once I get the script finished. It's getting there. It's getting there. I promise it's coming. Um, anyway, so one six two dominant seven. So that's the first little bit, and the melody goes like this. I hope I hope you can hear the guitar as well. Like I said, it's not plugged in, so I'm gonna play as loud as I can. But anyway, um, so the the head goes like this, right? If I screw it up, so that's the first little bit, yeah. Now, there's a lot of cool stuff going on on that bebop scale, flat nine kind of pattern thing, um, and kind of outlining some chord changes and stuff, and some cool extensions. You'll see what I mean about like uh, extensions of the chords being outlined a lot more than just the one, the three, the five, and the seven, which I talked about previously. Is you know you got these chord changes. And and when you outline those chord changes, you know, playing the one, the three, the five, and the seven to kind of outline those those things. But the thing that these guys were doing, like I say, were playing extensions, ninths, elevenths, thirteenths. Did I miss one? Nine, eleven, thirteen. Yeah. You know, so lots of that. You know, sharp fives, flat fives, sharp nines, flat nines, um, sharp elevens, all that sort of business to really create a you know a much more interesting um, harmonic kind of sound with the lines that they have yeah so anyway what's going on here it starts on the starts on the on the seven of the of the f sorry the a flat major seven which is a, a g and does a little flourish kind of a down to the six and then what happens is we get uh, like i said the other day the bebops go so he so he uh he flourishes on the um on the seven up to the root back down to the seven down to the six and then chromatically down from the six down to the five, which is the part of that bebop scale, the A, may, uh, A flat major bebop scale, which uh, if you've been doing your uh, doing your research or your practice, you should know is A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat, E natural, F, G, A. So what uh, what's going on again? So we're going chromatically down to the fifth, uh, and then it continues down the A flat major bebop scale. 
Now, instead of going to the A flat, which would normally happen if you're playing uh, uh, an A flat major bebop scale, that would be A flat major bebop scale. But instead, because we're changing to uh, an F dominant seven, this is what I I can't remember. I, I did a video a while back, the last one I did, which was talking about thirds and sevenths, but I think I deleted it because I didn't like it. Anyway, uh, thirds and sevenths are the most important notes in a chord. They're the, the notes that define what the chord is. The third um, tells you whether it's a major or a minor chord, and the seventh tells you what quality of seventh chord is, whether it's a dominant seventh chord, whether it's a, um, a major seven chord, a minor seven, or a minor major seven, depending on the third as well. Hi there, uh, Prophet of Loki. Good to have you with me. Um, so uh, in this case, what Parker has done, instead of going to the A flat, like you would expect going down an A flat um, bebop scale, he's gone to an A natural, which is the third of that F dominant seventh chord, which perfectly outlines the sound of that thing. So when you listen to that little line, you hear the sound of that of that F7, which is the the important chord. So that that change, you know, um, that's that that's ki uh, kind of a um, what you would call outlining the changes, I suppose. Really, um, you could play an A flat in that case because it's kind of like a um, uh, what a like a sharp nine sound, but Doing this A really outlines what that change actually is, um, and I think uh, is a good kind of habit to get into. So, um, so that's that's the first thing I'd take away from that is is, is aiming taking that scale that A that A flat dominant seven oh, sorry uh, major bebop scale and then aiming for that a third of that uh, that F dominant seven. It's just a it's a it's a fantastic fantastic thing. So you can hear the the sound of the of those changes. So you, you can hear. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, so you could take that idea. So this is just the this, this is what's great about this is you can take that very first little little thing and take that whole idea and, and, and stretch it to the hills, right? So play a dominant, uh, sorry, sorry, the bebop scale for the A flat, major seven, over that A flat, and then aim for the A uh, natural, yeah? Oh, sorry. So uh, starting from the six is obviously gonna put you in the right place for that, right? So if you start from the six and descend chromatically, uh, six, Sharp five, five, four, three, two, and then, uh, then what I did was go chromatically up to the to the A, uh, A natural, which outlines that F sound. And I know I'm harping on this thing a lot, but but that that's kind of the defining feature of that first chord change. Because if it wasn't, it would just be an F minor chord, which is you know fine, but it, it creates that tension that then leads you on to the B flat seven there. Yeah? Um, cool. So yeah, taking that idea, um, uh, do, do. taking that idea of of the the bebop scale leading to the third of the next chord. Cool. So that's the first bit, and then we get this uh, this little kind of flat nine pattern. So it start it goes down to the to the C. So we've got. So it goes down to, to the C, which is the fifth of F, F7. Um, so we're going C, E flat, which is the seventh of, of um, F7. F, which is the which is the um, the root of F, obviously. Um, and then it does this little flat nine, sharp nine flourish leading into the third of um, the B flat seven, which is the D. So again, we've gone from third of, of F um, dominant seven to the third of B flat seven, which is fantastic voice leading. It, it, you can hear the the changes of the whole thing just based on those things, right?
You can hear how the harmonic, the harmonic movement of the tune just from those from that line, which is really kind of what you want to be able to do. I, I, I try to talk about this in my other stuff as well is is um, creating a sense of the harm, the underlying harmony from your lines. Um, so that even if you weren't playing with a bass player or a pianist or whatever, that underlying harmony is going to be there because that, that's kind of one of the, 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 the core of the tune, right? You, you, otherwise, you're just playing scales, which is not what you want. You want you want to be playing you playing music, um, and that's going to come from, from really uh, focusing on those those uh, those important notes. Cool. So so like again, what, what we've got here is going down the A B box scale, A flat B box scale, sorry, to the third of F7 and then doing a little uh, flat nine kind of pattern going five, seven, root, and then, so that's uh, flat nine, sharp nine. So the flat nine being a, an F sharp or a G flat and a sharp nine being G sharp. Root, seven, third. And I think I, again, I can't remember whether I deleted this, uh, this was part of a deleted video or not, but um, you'll find that in these, um, uh, in these changes and built within the changes um, is a kind of um, uh, what do you call it? you well they're called um, chord tones right and they 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 kind of move in this sort of um, seesawy kind of way so through through this uh, first two bars or three bars or four bars or whatever it is the the um, the thirds and sevenths go like this right a flat which uh, the thirds and sevenths are G and C G being the seventh C being the third um, and then it goes to F7 with A and E flat being the third and seventh. And then it goes to B flat, A flat and D being the thirds and sevenths. And you'll notice that the A, which is the third of F7, goes down a semitone to an A flat, which is the seventh of B flat. And the E flat, which is the seventh of F7, it goes down a semitone to the third, the D of B flat. So the third and the seventh kind of switch places when you when you're moving around the cycle like this, when you're going um, down a fourth, up a fifth, or sorry, down a fifth, up a fourth, down a fifth, up a fourth, you know, that kind of cyclical movement, and you get this kind of of the of the, uh, the 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 chord tones that are going through that. And so when when you aim for the seventh of one um, one chord, it's easy to then change from that by going down a semitone to the third of the next chord. So in this case, that's what's kind of happened. He's gone F, E flat, which is the seventh of, of that F7, down the semitone to the D, which is the third of that B flat. So if you can understand that relationship between third, seventh, third, seventh, third, seventh, um, you can you can use that to your advantage when creating these lines, right? So the, um, and you'll see that happening a lot in this, going from third to seventh or seventh to third, um, recognizing that when you, when you go, um, B flat, E flat, A flat, which is the two five that comes up in this. Um, the thirds and sevenths in that are A flat, which is the seventh of B flat, and D flat, which is the third of B flat, change to G and D flat, which is the third and seventh of E flat. And then that G stays the same for A flat because it's the seventh. And then the seventh of E flat goes down a semitone to the C, which is the third of A flat. It just, if you can understand that, and get that embedded in your lines. They're going to sound fantastic. Anyway, okay, so we've got the first little bit. So the, the last little bit is uh, is just a little B flat thing. So we've got. Oh. Ah. So that's kind of a cool little uh, little B flat seven riff. Because what's happening with that B flat seven is it's very static. It's not it's not necessarily kind of leading anywhere. So he plays a line which kind of complements that. There's no there's the the line doesn't really lead to anywhere new it just kind of outlines the chord with some nice extensions so it starts on the third goes up a f minor triad well i suppose it would be like a like a d oh i talked about this is another thing is using you know a minor seven flat five chord over top of another chord to create these extensions so in this case he's using a d minor seven flat five d f a flat c over top of that b flat to create a b flat nine sound D flat, uh, so D being the third, F being the fifth, A flat being the seventh, and C being the ninth of that, of that B flat seven. So that's kind of cool. And I said that before I did this video, that's how knowledgeable I am. <laughs> I 
Okay, so up that up that D minus seven flat five, and then uh, uh, which is six um, and five G F, uh, and then what happens? Uh, okay, cool. And then uh, okay, so that's that's the first little bit, and then okay, so it um so at this point it goes to a just a normal two five one back into A flat, so B flat minus seven. E flat seven, A flat major seven. Um, and so what happens is he does an enclosure. So I talked about enclosures briefly as well, um, but enclosures are another kind of um, uh, idiosyncrasy of, of jazz music, finding a target tone and then playing chromatically or or so kind of around that note, yeah? So in this case, the target note is an E flat, which is the, what the four of the, or the 11 of the B flat, minor seven and also like the root of um, the E flat dominant seven. So he's kind of treating that section sort of as just E flat seven, which I've also mentioned before is, is if you see a two five in a certain key, you can just treat it as, as, as the, as the five and, and that'll still kind of work. Um, so that could be what he's doing there. But anyway, that, that's the target note E flat. And he, he plays, he plays a note, a semitone above a semitone below and then lands on the E flat. So that's an enclosure. And you can do that for any of those chord tones or any of the notes that you want to, to land on, your sort of target tones. Yeah, so you can you can do that. So that's uh, that's kind of a cool thing to take away from that. And like I say, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, a semitone either side as well. It could be tones either side. It could be, you know, oh, sorry. So this, in that case, the, the E flat is the tone and I'm starting a tone above, going down semitones and then going below a tone and then coming up. So I use that one a lot. I use I use like a tone below and then up semi uh, up chromatically to the target tone. I'll do that quite often. Um, um, so that's that's a good one to kind of get under your belt as well. OK, so. So uh, yeah, so target tone E flat, and then he goes a semi to a, a, a kind of an enclosure, just it's more like a um, an approach tone, um, going to A flat. Oh sorry, A flat, a natural of um, which is the major seven of the B flat minor, but it's just more like I say, more of an approach tone, going to B flat, and then he just goes up a B my B flat minor arpeggio, but like adding a bunch of it like dude like a bunch of extensions like on top of that so he's going up a full um b flat minor 11 arpeggio so b flat d flat f a flat c e flat so that's one three five seven nine eleven and then landing on the d flat which is the seventh of the of the e flat <laughs> Uh, don't want to seven. This is just, just everything about the solo. I'm oh, sorry about this head is just fantastic. And the, like, again, the idea that I want you to take away from this is, is, is the kind of general concept of what's happening here. So not necessarily the lines themselves or what they are, but kind of just what he's doing. So he's outlining that B flat minor 11 chord with that cool arpeggio. And so by, my, what you might take away from that one is that approach tone. So, so doing a semitone below playing to, so you can do that in, in any one of the different places. You can pick your approach tone. Uh, sorry, you can pick your target tone and then do like a an approach above or below. Like I do this one quite often as well. Uh. So doing, so starting at a C, going up to the D flat, which is the third of the B flat major seven, and then playing a uh, B flat minor seven, and then playing a, a D flat major. Major nine arpeggio, which again just outlines them a B flat minor eleven sound. Um, but but the point of that is is that I've got that approach tone, yeah. And you could do that on any of those. There, you know, I'm playing so E flat. Oh, sorry, E natural to F approach tone to the F up and F minor arpeggio, and then landing on uh, landing on the, the the seventh of that E flat um, dominant seven. Um, and you could do it down as well if you wanted to. Um, I haven't really tried, I haven't really done it before. Something like that, you know. So, so taking that general concept 
and applying that to your plan rather than just the specific thing. Um, that's something that I that I struggled with a little bit when I was at university because what we kind of did was we learnt, we had these books and they had licks and they had lines and they had things and that you would learn. You'd learn those and that was the thing. Uh, but and, and it became very much like, you know, you, you, for one, you th when you think about it, you're like, well, isn't everyone else, everyone just going to sound the same because they're all learning exactly the same licks and the same things and all that sort of stuff. Um, and, and second of all, you know, when you come to playing the stuff, not kind of shoehorning it in, I suppose. Um, and the reality is that that it's more about getting the concept of the thing. This is what I'm trying to get is 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 that you know that sure there's the bebop scale, you know there's there's the bebop scale, um, but getting that sound, the idea, the the concept of the bebop scale is to line up chord tones. Is is you've got the chord tones that outline what the the chord and the harmony is, and using chromaticism to do that is kind of what the bebop scale is all about. So taking that concept um, and, and again, like, you know, these, these kind of shut up computer, these, um, these flat nine licks or whatever, um, you know, that's a, that's a very common flat nine lick, but the thing to take away from, from it, I suppose, is starting on the third of a chord, going up to the flat nine and resolving on the, on the third of the next chord, um, or broadly, broadly, more broadly, um, focusing on those thirds and sevenths and seeing how they interact with each other over the course of the harmony. So that's what I'd like you to take away from, from this. Uh, anyway, this is just a good study. This head is a great study in how to do that practically. And it's good to learn it as well because it's a technically good exercise. Okay, anyway. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Okay, so that's the next bit. Okay, that would be the line over top of the two five one, and it's a great thing because it. Ah, oh, okay. Let me let me just go through it. So we've got the the arpeggio. Uh, okay, so. Um. <clears throat> so what's happening there? Like I said, it's the seventh of the of the E flat dominant seven. That is cool. <laughs> it's going again. It's kind of a, an approach tone um, underneath the F, which is this, which is the nine of the E flat, but also like the fifth of the B flat. But it's so it's E to F, and that's kind of mirrored up top, going to the uh, to the thirteen of the E flat down to uh, a sharp five of the of the E flat, and then down an E flat um, augmented arpeggio seventh D flat C, which is the third of A flat. It's just that's such a fantastic line. That's a cool one to get. And uh, I talked about putting in um, you know um, augmented dominant seven chords into you know into your playing. That's that's a cool one. Getting that 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 uh, augmented sound into into your over top of dominant seven chord leading to the one um, is going to be a good thing to kind of get down. But that that's that's a really cool line. So E to F, C to B, G, E flat, D, C. It just leads so nicely. And again, like right at the end, there is the is the seventh of E flat seven, D flat resolving down a semitone to the third of A flat. It's just fantastic. <laughs> so you, you could even do something like that rather than going down the octave. You could go up. Uh, and it kind of works as an enclosure as well. The, the, the note that we're aiming for is a C natural and the, the, the B, which is the sharp five of E flat and the D flat, which is the seven of E flat enclose the C natural, which is the third of the A flat. Just um, cool things. Okay, cool. So that so we're A flat. That's so that's what we got so far. A flat, F seven, B flat, B flat minor, E seven, A flat. So that whole whole bit goes like this. Yeah. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two.
Yeah. But so he plays a, a okay, so we'll move on from that. He plays a plays a little arpeggio, a C minor seven. Which again is 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 uh is playing an arpeggio from the third of a chord, but like um the, the quality um flipped. So I suppose the concept there that you'd want to do is playing playing an arpeggio from a chord tone. Broadly it would be a chord tone. Um, but let's focus just on the third for now. So if you play an arpeggio from the third of a chord, flip the uh, quality, it's going to give you cool extensions, basically. So in the case of A flat major seven, you play from the third, the third being C, but flip the quality. So instead of being, instead of playing a C major seven, you play a C minor seven. And that gives you, uh, it gives you an A flat nine sound. If you went, to the fifth, so that so that would be A flat, right? Um, say I wanted, if I was doing A minor, I go to the third, which again is C, but in this case, I'm flipping the, the quality, so I get a C major seven over that A flat minor, which gives me an A flat minor sound. Yeah, so that's that's a cool thing to do. Then again, like I say, you could go to any of the other chord tones and play the thing, but each time you need to flip the quality. So from the third, it's gonna be, this is to be like in key. You, obviously, you could not flip the quality, and you could get some funky R sounds. Like if you played a C major, um, a C major seven chord over a flat, you'd get a you'd get a sharp five and a flat sharp nine. A flat, you know, that'd be an interesting sound. A a major, a major seven, sharp five, sharp nine. If you want, anyway. Uh, but you know, that's uh, that's up to you. Um, uh, but yeah, so each time you go to a different chord tone, you flip the um, uh, flip the quality. Excuse me, I'm just going to put on my Facebook so I forgot that Lucas will probably, the guy that I'm staying with, will want to get inside and he was going to message me. Hey man, I'm on my way back. Okay. Um... I'll have to leave when he when he gets it. Anyway, um, so that would be the th so in this case, A flat major seven. Um, start from the fifth, which would be E flat. You'd play major seven, E flat major seven, which would be E flat G, B flat D, which will give you a A major seven sharp eleven sound. Um, so you've gone. You could play A flat major seven arpeggio, you could play C minor seven arpeggio, or you could play E flat major seven arpeggio. You could even go up to the next if you want to start from the G, you'd play G minor seven arpeggio over A flat, and that's gonna give you a, um, a major seven, sharp 11 with a 13, which is kind of a nice sound. And if you go any further than that, then you're getting into um, uh, major seven flat nine territory, but with those extensions, one of the cool things about uh, about extensions is kind of the the broader the distance, the more consonant it sounds. Like if you play a, a chord on a piano, if you play a an A flat major seven in one hand and a G minor nine in the other hand, G minor nine, B flat major seven, sorry, which is just up from that. So if you played an A flat major seven in one hand and a B flat major seven in one hand, that's giving you all the extensions all the way up to another into, to an A natural, which shouldn't sound right. But it totally does. Trust me on that. Have a listen. Go A flat, C, uh, E flat, G, uh, B flat, D, F, A, and it's a it's it's kind of a cool sound. And logic dictates that it shouldn't be, but it totes is. Um, anyway, um, totally off topic. So the point of that was uh, was you know playing a, a minor seven arpeggio from the third of an of a major seven chord is going to give you that cool extension. So in this case, in this case, he's gone up a C minor seven arpeggio and then landed on the root, and then what does he do? Uh, and then he he goes to the fifth and plays. <laughs> so good because the next uh, okay, so the next chord uh, is a two five into the four of of A flat major seven, which is D flat. So E flat minor seven, A flat seven, D flat major seven, and then it goes D flat minor seven back to A flat, which is a minor plagal cadence. A flat seven, F seven, B flat seven, and then so the chords just kind of repeat from that point on. So we've got so the whole chord progression up to that point is A flat, F seven, B flat seven, B flat minor seven, 
A, uh, e flat seven, A flat seven, E flat minor, A flat seven, D, uh, D flat seven, D flat major seven, D flat minor seven, uh, A flat major seven, F seven, B flat, and then we kind of repeat. Um, okay, so da, 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 da. so we go down to the fifth, which is E flat, F, G flat, which is the third of of E flat minor seven, which is again, it's just playing the chord tones. It's fantastic. So he goes up a G flat major seven arpeggio. Again, this is what I just said. If we if that he's playing a major seven arpeggio from the third um, to outline uh, outline the extensions of an E flat minor chord. So the chord is E flat minor, and he plays from the third, which is G flat, but flips the quality to make it a, a G flat major seven. Uh, and then goes E natural C, which is sharp five third of uh, of the a flat seven that's just it's just so good um so that nicely outlines the third so then he goes uh then he goes up to the nine of the d flat seven so that's what i mean again like i was saying before about how these guys focused a lot more on the upper extensions of these chords so instead of playing like a like a seven or a third or something on that on this d flat seven he's played the nine which sounds really nice so it's um nine root seven six and then nine root on the uh, on the minus, uh, the, the 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 four is a minus seven. So again, that's that that's that minor plagal cadence thing I talked about, where instead of playing the four as a major seven chord, you play it as a minor chord, and it leads back to the um uh to the to the root. It's a nice uh, a nice kind of extra tension to move back to uh to the one of the key. Um, And then he does that. He, go, he kind of plays down a, a well, it's a, it's a D flat minor seven, which is the same as a C sharp minor seven. So it kind of plays down um, that scale, starting from the 11. 11, third, nine, root. <laughs> and where does he land? Where does the chord go? Where? Let me tell you, Sonny Jim lands on the third of the, uh, of the A flat major seven. So that whole bit there, we've got... Um, Just fantastic. It just, it, it just all, all is fantastic. So yeah, he plays down uh, like a C C sharp minor D flat minor scale from the eleventh down to the the third of um, A flat major seven. Uh. Uh. Uh, sorry. I always get this bit wrong. Uh, oh crap! I'm screwing this bit up. That we'll just go for that that little bit for now. Um, okay, so we've got. So he does like a little chromatic thing up from the third up to the fifth, and then plays down the scale without that chromatic note in there, and then does exactly the same thing that he did right at the beginning, going to the third. Of the F dominant seven, outlining that change, and then kind of does the same thing that he did, but up an octave. So before it was, yeah, but in in this case he's gone third. So, so yeah, it's pretty much exactly the same thing, but up an octave. So rather than going. Um, going down to the to the C. Uh, sorry, C E flat F, and then um, flat nine sharp nine to the third. He's just gone up and up instead. So um, to third C down to the third of B flat seven. It's uh, it's just fantastic. <laughs> Uh, I 
think that's what it is. I, for some reason, I'm just forgetting that bit completely. Um, so there you go. With my with my muscle memory, it works works better. Um, fuck. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. You two people that are watching, don't tell anyone. Uh, let me try that one more time. Um, Because that's really bizarre. If I play it slowly, I can't get it. If I play it fast. There you go. Okay, so I mean, it's kind of, again, just kind of outlining a, a B flat on the seven chord, but in a, in a very kind of static way and leading to the, the kind of flat five um, uh, sharp 11 kind of sound which is kind of a common thing for that, like if, you, if you've got the two as a dominant seven rather than a, a minor seven chord. So in this case, it's that kind of dominant seven uh, secondary dominant sound. And to play that as a, as a dominant seven sharp five is, uh, sorry, flat five, um, whole tone scale. Uh, or augmented, augmented triad. It does it in, uh, like I say, in Take the A Train as well. It outlines it in the melody. Because the melody goes five. Sharp five of the uh, of the of the two dominant seven. So that's kind of a kind of a common thing, and that's kind of what it does. <laughs> that's a really cool look as well. I like that one. Okay, so this is the next bit going on from the two, five, one. I like that little lick because there's a lot of good stuff going on there. So starting on the on the eleven of the of the B flat minor seven, down to the seven, and then outlining a, an F minor seven arpeggio. Like I said, this is uh, so we're on B flat minor at the moment, but he's playing an F minor seven. So like I said, you go to a chord tone, flip the flip the quality because it's the fifth. You're going to flip the quality twice, so just keep it the same. Um, so and play that as a minor chord. And it's going to give you those nice extensions. Um, da, da, da. You can hear that working. <laughs> so, uh, da, 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 root down to the fifth, seventh of the B flat minor seven to the third of E flat uh, dominant seven. So going up. So that's playing, um, playing like a G, uh, G or or, or uh, E diminished chord, starting from G, G, B flat, D, which is the third, the seventh, uh, third, the fifth, and the seventh of that of that um, E, E flat seven, and then flat nine, sharp nine, root seven, third. Oh, so good. So that's kind of a cool thing as well. The concept of that being getting that kind of sound down. So starting on the starting on the the uh, flat nine, sharp nine, flat nine, root root seven third of the chord you're aiming for. That's a, that's quite a common kind of jazzy sound as well. Yeah, so uh, so that would be the takeaway from that bit, and then it goes back to just the beginning bit, and then uh, so that's that's the same as as what was at the beginning, but now the the harmony changes to a G minor seven flat five, C seven, F minor like dark F minor, so like minus minus six minor major seven. 
kind of sound because it's that kind of more darker minor sound than uh, than just like a um, Dorian or whatever. So we go G minor seven flat five, C seven, F minor seven. Uh, cool. So that what happens there is. Uh, You can hear that that leading on as well. So, um, so now just a, a little run. So starting from starting from uh, from G, which is like the root, I suppose, of the G minor seven flat five or the fifth of, of C. Like you could be treating this whole thing as just a C uh, seven kind of thing. You'll notice in this bit a lot more kind of uh, altered extensions and chromaticism uh, because of that kind of darker tone that's kind of happening in this bit. So down to the third of the C. It's kind of just a, an F minor major seven kind of sound. And then so this is the, the flat nine, sharp nine. Flat nine, sharp nine, flat nine, root, down to the seventh of the C7. And then uh, sharp five, seven, which is kind of just kind of just the F minor scale, I suppose. But then down to the uh, kind of an approach tone, kind of also the third of C7. So either of those things. So that bit is, is kind of just a little F minor idea. But it's also kind of a C augmented sort of sound. It's got it's got kind of different bits, uh, sections of that in there. That's all kind of in that little bit. So, so we're at F minor. Nothing happens on the C7. And then we get to the kind of bridge section. Like I say, lots of chromaticism. So starting from the fifth, Going to the oh sorry well it would be starting from the nine of the of the F minor but like the G maybe it's starting on G anyway to C which is the fifth of 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 F minor and it just does this chromatic thing C B C D sharp uh, D flat D uh, uh. that's all right geek I'm I'm glad you like my my musical nerdy bullshit. <laughs> It's definitely fun for me. I don't know about the people watching. Obviously, you enjoyed it. I'm glad you do. Um, so going up chromatically uh, with that kind of pattern. Do, 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 do. So picking, there's a couple of, uh, like, I suppose the 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 tones that have been aimed for here are the C, which is the fifth. D, which is the minor six, which is like, again, that darker sound on that, on that F minor. Really dark kind of sound. And then C, which is the, uh, which is the, the major seven of that F minor seven. So, like I say, all all kind of a very dark sort of sound. Um, and so those are the those are the notes that are being aimed for. They're coming down on the bass. But so all those are the ones that that kind of hit home and outline that very dark sound. So. So what uh, what's kind of happening is is the the tone that you're aiming for, semitone below, back to the tone, up chromatically to the next tone, and then down and then up, and then up chromatically again to the next tone, and then down and then up. Down chromatically. Uh, again, just a kind of an F minor motif. And then this is my favorite part of the whole thing going up a B. So at this point we go to a B diminished chord. So we've gone um, F G C F minor B diminished C minor F seven B flat seven E flat seven A flat. And this bit is really cool. So we go up a B uh, B diminished arpeggio starting from the B B D F A flat D G uh, G F C uh, 
So yeah, up the um up the B diminished arpeggio. Up to like the thirteen of the kind of interesting uh, choices for, for for notes, I suppose, because it's um, it's the thirteen, the the flat five, which is which is fine for the for the uh, B diminished, and then um, flat five, I suppose. Oh, sorry, no, sus four, which is a weird kind of sound over. But what it's really doing is it's a leading tone. Again, like a, an approach tone to the third of the C minor seven. So we've got uh, four quite quick chords happening in this last little bit. C minor seven, F seven, B flat seven, E flat seven, F. Ah, uh, sorry, A flat. So three, six, two, five, one, jazz to the max. So, so it's yeah, it's kind of just an approach tone, little chromatic thing. Again, just a chromatic thing to lead on to the third of C minor. Uh, and a, a, just a little line down uh, down the A flat major scale, um, starting from the third of C minor, E flat, D flat, C, B flat, which is the seventh of C minor, to the A, which is the third of that of that F minor, which uh, sorry the F dominant seven, which he does all the time. Uh, uh, what have I done? Uh, F. So uh, third flat nine root seven third of B minor up the arpeggio of uh, like a D flat major arpeggio D flat F A flat C B flat A uh, G which is the third of E flat, uh, e flat seven. Down to E flat five one, it's just fantastic. So B my uh, B dominant seven uh, B sorry diminished up here. Approach tone to the third third of F seven flat nine third of B flat seven up the upper D major seven arpeggio D flat major seven arpeggio third of E flat seven E flat A. That's just a fantastic line. I love it. I love it. There's just so much going on there. Um, I think I, I kind of talked about everything I sort of wanted to, to do about that. I kind of need to go now because my uh, Lucas is going to be home um, very soon. So I'm going to let him back in and stop uh, talking about jazz. But um, I hope that you could get something from that. Again, like I said, it's, it's not necessarily about the lines or the notes themselves, but more about the general concept of what's kind of happening. So the bebop scales, the chromaticism to lead to chord tones, the chord tones being thirds and sevenths, aiming for those, putting in those flat nine, sharp nine sounds to lead on to thirds and sevenths. Um, yeah, so being able to play the the thirds and sevenths thing is a big one. Um, what else was there in there? You know, the, the arpeggios from the third or the fifth or the seventh of a chord to outline um, the different kind of extended chord tones of a chord. So when it's a, when it's a, a major seven chord playing from the third but flipping the quality to make it to start as a as a minor chord so a flat you'd play from the third which is c but play it as a c minor seven and that's going to give you the extension so you could start it from the fifth but then it's going to be back to a major seven so it'll be e flat major seven over a flat so those are going to give you cool extensions if you play those things so that happened a lot in that so um those would be things that you kind of want to get from that like i said the concepts rather than necessarily the lines themselves the lines are good to learn if you if you learn the lines and kind of shoehorn them into your playing to begin with i found this is like i'll take a thing and then just like yeah kind of shoehorn it into my playing and it will mean that over time you the sound gets into you because <laughs> that's what it is right you get in the sound of the the of 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 that kind of bebop sound from that. And then, you know, the more you practice, the more scales and 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 licks and all that sort of stuff you learn, they'll, they'll all kind of mold and eventually you'll you'll just do it, man. Just 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 shut up and do it. So that's basically it. Um I hope that you learned something. If you liked this, please like, please uh, you know, subscribe, all that sort of business. Um, I'm probably gonna keep doing these. I'm working on some essays at the moment. Uh, I am at camp now very soon, so I will be working quite a lot. Um, on that uh, so it might 
I mean, production for me has stopped pretty. <laughs> it's going to be even less probably, um, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, keep listening to me on Twitter or whatever. Um, if you uh, feel like you'd like to support me, my uh, you could donate me a coffee in my Kofi page, which is Music Man Mike on Kofi, or Patreon if you feel like uh, an extended uh, financial support is something that's up your alley. Um, keep jazzing. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Thanks for thanks for tuning in.